children as well. Amen. We have to groom them for the battle. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, just wave your hands in this prophetic atmosphere. Come on, shine that You want something from God today? Come on, begin to pull on heaven. Come on, I shake it down. Hallelujah. Even on Talking. I'm a talker, not a gossiper. 
But baby, I do what I say. Amen? Hallelujah. Glory to God. Job 1, 1 through 20. I'm going to read around. Amen? There was a man in the land of Uz, and then I'm going to pray, whose name was Job. And that man was perfect and upright. Excuse me. And one that feareth he, feared he God and eschewed evil. His substance was also, also was 7,000 sheep and 3,000 camels and 500 yoke of oxen and 500 she asses and very great household so that this man was the greatest of all the men of the east. Five, and it was so when the days of their feasting were gone about that Job sent and sanctified them and rose up early in the morning and offered burnt offerings according to the number of them all but Job said, it may be that my sons have sinned and cursed God in their hearts. Thus did Job continually. See why we got to pray for our kids? We don't know what stuff they into. My mama told this one lady, her friend one time, she said, honey, her kids was this, her kids was that, just a brag and a can on. I mean can on, like the old was a can on, not carrying on, can on. So, my mama said, honey, because you know I was a good hustler. I was always an ear hustle, just like Kennedy. She's an ear hustle. Baby, you think she'll be listening? She can hear a cotton ball drop on the on the floor. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you listening, Kennedy? She said, what are they talking about? So she said, girl, I'm gonna listen. I don't brag on my kids, because when they're not around, they'll do whatever they want to do. So I just give them up to the Lord. And ask God to watch over me. You know, I took on that principle to pray for my children. You don't know what they're doing. Kids are sneaky. So you got to pray. Like he did, he offered up a burnt offering. Praying for his kids. Amen? Eight says, And the Lord said unto Satan, Thou hast thou considered my servant Job, that there is none like him in the earth. A perfect and upright man, one that feareth God and escheweth evil. Hast thou not made a hedge about him, the devil said, and, and about his house, and about all that he has on every side? You know, they say, you got so much faith with God, it's not going to touch you. Thou hast blessed the work of his hands, and his substance is increased in the land. By hard work, he was blessed. Put forth thine hand now, and touch all that he has, and he will curse thee to thy face. Lord, why don't you just try him? Why don't you just try him a little bit, and see what happens? Huh? See, they feel good right now because they car running. You know, folks say all kind of stuff. And the Lord said to say, Behold, all that he had is in thy power. Only upon himself, put not forth thine hand. So Satan went forth from the presence of the Lord. And there came a messenger unto Job and said, The oxen were plowing and the asses feeding beside them. And the Sibians fell upon them and took them away. Yea, they have sown slain their servants with the edge of the sword. And I only am escaped alone to tell thee. And he goes on to tell him how everything in his land gets consumed. Amen? Down to verse 20. And then Job arose and rent his mantle and shaved his head and fell down upon the ground and worship. Come on, look at your neighbor and say, assume the position. Come on, look up to heaven and say, assume the position. Father God, we thank you for this word. We ask that you blow your roof, our breath, the anointing upon this word to minister to the hearts and the minds and the soul of your people. Don't let us leave the same today, but God let us leave changed, challenged, and convicted. God, I decrease that you would increase in me and preach Jesus and him crucified. Now we thank you for the word and we bless you for your anointing and we give you glory. In Jesus' name we say, amen. Assume the position. You say, now, Pastor Carol, what is the position that I need to assume? Well, we see that Job was doing pretty good. And all of a sudden, things begin to go awry. 
A lot of times we think because people are going through some things that they have done some things and gotten out of order or in sin or whatever the case may be, we choose to think because we're carnal in our mindset what they doing. Now, on the other side of that coin, we do know some people be doing stuff. Okay? And y'all got to smack them around a little bit because he does us the same way to smack us right back in the will of God. Amen? For our own sake. But in this case, we see that Job was a holy man, a righteous man, an upright man. Come on, eschew of evil and fear God. And still, all these things begin to come his way. All these adverse things, all these things that upset him, like I said on that video, if you have not seen that video that I did call the change on Facebook, please go to my Facebook. Friend me and go see that because the change has to happen in order for you to have the elevation. Amen? So what I said on that video is said, sometimes God, God will send upset conditions. That's what they call them in the government. Upset conditions. Things that are out of your control. You can't control it. You know, we control a lot of stuff. Like, Pastor T said you can control with your money and all that stuff, but you stuck at that airport and guess what? They didn't ask you how much money you had, and if you had a private plane, maybe you could get out of your place that you were flying to, depart and go to your destination. But that takes a lot of money. But there was a lot of people that got millions that was in that airport. And they didn't ask for one person to you got a million, we'll fly you on out. Like he said, it was out of their control. And things kept happening. One hour passed. Two hour passed. Three hours. People was in the airport 10 hours. Hungry. And if you had just a little money, you was hungry. Because some people travel with a little money. I'm going to eat on the other side. I eat before I go and during and on the other side. Can't you tell? The waist trainer ain't doing his job. So anyway, Job kept getting hit and hit and hit. Have you ever asked God, now what else, how much more can I take? He kept hitting him again and again and again. And people just kept bringing more bad news and more bad news and more bad news. But what did he do? Job rose up. Job rose up and rent his mantle. Shaved his head and fell down upon the ground and worshiped. A lot of times, because we all out of character, when things are hitting us, we get mad, we say things, we do things, we act out, we have attitudes and dispositions. Come on now. I ain't going to church this Sunday because I don't want to, I'm just tired. I'm tired of it all. That's the first place. And I want to put a pen right here. That's the first thing people do. And I've seen it happen. When stuff, stuff happens to them, or they get struck, or they get hit, the first thing they do is talk about and get mad with God. Then they go down as a man with God. Maybe the devil doing it. I don't know. Man with God. A man with the pastors. The nice people that sit there at the beer. I'm mad at them. They go all the way down to the kidney. But they start right there with this family their relationship with God, like God did something to them, only God did, only thing he did was allow it, but they don't understand. They say, I was just singing, you can use anything, you can use me, could not hold them, if you can use anything, Lord, you can use me, and then back you talk about you on your job, on Monday morning. That you can't get up and give God some praise. You know why? Because I, He can use me, but He can't use me to handle the pressure. But Job said, I must stay still. The Bible says, Stand ye still and see the salvation of the Lord. You, when He rose up, He rent His mantle, come on, and shaved His head and fell down and worshiped. See the position and the when God said assume the position, you got to get in the position first of prayer. I call it laying in the cut because you need some instructions and some guidance and some information. But no, we go running off in our mindset first. 
Then we run off in our mouth to the wrong people. Then we run off, come on now, with our feet doing stuff we shouldn't be doing. Because we get tired. God, I just don't see you moving. I just don't see. No, 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 no. You can't see him because the Bible says faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. So sometimes you won't see God in a situation until you come higher, like I said, fly above the storm and see something greater, see him high and lift him up. Then you can see him and his glory. You may not be able to understand, but if he did it once, he'll take you back in your mind. He'll take you back in your prayer time when you go and assume the position. And he'll remind you what I did here and there and here and there. I created a miracle for you. I got you out of this. I shut that down. Come on, I turned that around. I flipped the ship that over. I did it for you. And why would I not do it again now? He's going to do it again. Come on, look at your neighbor and say, he's going to do it again. When he read his mantle, it means he was unclothed and possessed nothing. He gave it up. He also gave up his power and what it means that he gave us his control in the situation. We want to control it. I'm telling you, we do. I do. You do. All of us do. Because if we can control it, then we can pretty much know what the outcome is going to be. Huh? So we think. So, he said, I'm going to give up my power. Because I got to hear what God is saying. Amen? Instead of having our own way and doing things in our own strength, and then we get our own reward, and then we're mad. This all I got is a nickel? Well, you did it your own way. God tried to give you $500, but you did it yeah. your way and you ended up with five bucks. Come on. Come on. That's why Proverbs 3 and 6 says, In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct our path. Sometimes I get to running off in the mornings, and God said, Hey, you didn't pray about me directing your path. What are you running off to? What are you doing? Because sometimes God will tell me, no, you're not going to do anything today. You're going to sit down and hear me. Come on now. Meditate upon me. Meditate upon my word. Then he shaved his head. That means he fell down to the ground and worshiped. As he shaved his head, James 4 and 10 says, humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord and he shall lift you up. When we learn to bow down in adversity, assume the position, you on the way to the greatest blessing ever in your life. The devil can never defeat a person that has this type of character. God let the hedge down on Job and let the devil try him in every area. Can I tell you that the hedge is going to come down in some of our lives in some areas? But will you be ready? What did I say at the beginning of my exhortation and part of my introduction? The head is coming down, but you have to have the right tools in order to fight. Whatever it is that comes your way, you have to have the tools. And this is what we provide you being in the house of God to empower you. So when you go out there and nobody's around, the praise team is not singing, the organ is not banging, come on, carrying on, the drums are not beating, come on now. No, you're not in, come on, you're not in here listening to any preaching. What are you going to do? What tools will you possess in order to win the fight, to stay in the battle so you can be a conqueror? Victorious, what are you going to do? Sometimes we run and cry and buck and scream and act a fool. Come on, we all been there. And the devil followed up behind us saying, Yeah, I'm gonna stick him again. I'm gonna stick him again. But if you learn how to bow down and worship, if you learn how to assume the position in prayer, in praise, in worship, God will give you the clarity and understanding how to get through that particular battle. St. John 16 and 33 says, These things I have spoken unto you, that ye might have peace. In the world ye shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. Things and circumstances are going to happen. But if you be 
assured. But the only way you can be assured is assume the position. They'll bring you out victoriously. I know because you're experiencing what looks like setbacks, hits, hard times. You say, God, I just got to raise that. They ain't going to raise my rent the same. I ain't going to have a 50 cent dollar left out of that. But baby, if you praise God, they'll throw another hundred on that for you. Huh? They'll throw another hundred. You'll say, what happened? It seems like my money is better. Come on. Assume the position. Sometimes the position is just to pay your tithes and act right. Come on now. I'm going to close my eyes and look around the room. I'm going to close them. Amen? Because sometimes that be what it is. You come on, come on. We get in God and get stingy. And I gotta say this because people, I've ministered to people, and I say, first of all, before I go too far in the council, even when I was just a prophetess and the evangelist, I said, listen, before we go too far, they're not gonna get no numbers out of my mouth. I said, are you a tither? I said, do you give offerings at your church? Well, you know, things, I said, mm mm, mm mm, no, 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 you're not, no, we're not talking until you learn how to give. Oh, what? I said, uh huh. I said, you're a thief and a robber, and you are you, you ain't bringing nothing over here. Okay? That's like stealing. You want to steal from my belly, steal from my mouth, steal from my experience, and you are not a giver. Come on now. You are not a tither. And you don't get tight when people talk about money. I said it 25, 30 years ago. I'm not afraid to talk about money. I'm not afraid to raise money. I'm not afraid to give money or spend money. Amen? But a lot of times, I've, I've dealt with people know their whole problem is they don't give nothing in the church. They just go and steal and eat and leave and come on out and want God to bless them. You are a thief and a robber. Amen? God said, put a pen in it and talk about it. I was at a place preaching a conference. You better hear what I'm saying to you, son. And in that conference, I took, after I got done, normally what, it was a small church, but it was packed out. And we was prophesied, I was prophesying over some people. This lady came down her prophecy. And then when I was getting ready to ask for $20, the same $20 that Mr. Diddy I've been asking over the other place, $20. She got her purse, I watched her eyes. The devil used her, she got her purse, looked around. She didn't think I was looking at her because I was prophesying. Got her purse, you hear this door, Mr. Stephanie, Mr. Stephanie, Mr. Stephanie, and she got her bag, and she said, and ran out. And guess what? Years later, she ended up divorced in a place. That, come on, she thought she'd never be divorced. She fine as wine and got everything going on. And now she's sad because she robbed God in that time of sacredness and said, I'm going to take from the woman of God. I'm going to take out of this place and I'm going to get nothing. God chastised her for it. Amen? She said, I ain't going to call from because she tried to be sneaky and thought she was getting away. But she lost her whole life that she loved over $20. Be very careful, amen? Everywhere we go, my mama taught us to give. Assume the position. Take your hand, put on your checkbook. Take your hand, put in your purse, in your wallet, and give unto the Lord like he tells you to do. So you can keep the devourer out your house, off your job. Because it takes money to move ministry. It takes money to do everything in your household. It takes money. And sometimes when you are not in a position of authority, people say, I can kill that. They're going to figure it out. God said, okay, I'm going to come to your house with the divider, and you won't figure it out. Lost her whole life that she loved over $20 being sneaky and creepy. And that was the second time she tried to steal from me in the spirit realm and in the natural. God knocked her whole life down. Now when I said, hey, uh -huh, I didn't have to do baby. You will never get away doing God a disservice. You may get by, but you won't get away. Amen? Come on, give God a praise on that. I know it's tight. Come on. Come on. But God will get you about that money. I know what I'm talking about. I've been a witness. Amen? He said, now don't do it again. <laughs> I said, I sure, I sure won't. When Samson got on the wrong path after he was taught 
Wow. It cost him his vision. Don't you know you will lose your way when you get on the wrong path? People say, honey, all I need is God. Okay. Go be only with God. I need mean, God, Jesus. I need some assistance from some people, some family, some friends. I need other things. What about you? Which led him astray and connected him to the wrong people. And he ended up in the pit, in the pit, until he repented. I always say this people are nice, but maybe they're not nice for you. Amen? Amen. But we feel like if we know somebody 30 years, honey, I'm never letting them go. But go ahead and keep them and stay, amen, stagnated. Amen? I was close. Me and Pastor was on our staycation, vacation. And God has already told me, he said, those that have been offensive to you and acting up, let them go to voicemail. Because don't you know people will pull back and remember how good you've been to them. People remember how you loved them, how you prayed them through, how you prophesied. Come on, things of the Lord and open their eyes and just be good to them. And then they run off and do what they want to do and get themselves in shambles and mixed up and in bondage in Egypt, an Egyptian, and become a whole, just all in bondage. Then they think, well, you know what? I, I think I'm going to call properly sincerely. I, I think I'm going to, she was so nice and just, I mean, she told me the truth and I didn't like it, you know, so I don't even know why. It's been about four or five years, I'm going to see what she's up to. Because, you know, I heard she's a pastor in the hood. So this particular lady called me. She about 18 years older than me, 15 years. And I looked at that phone. And I said, I'm not calling. She probably thinking right now, she didn't call me back. She didn't live in the city. No, I did not call you back. Because sometimes you better get sick and tired of people. You better get sick and tired of those people, of their behavior and their character. You better get sick and tired of them keeping you in bondage. You better get sick and tired of holding and jerking and mess and never see no elevation. Never see the value that they hold in your life. You better get sick and tired of it. And you better make some moves, baby, because if you don't, you will say never to the ground. You will say stagnated, and with the Egyptians, you will stay in Egypt and in bondage until you decide I'm walking on the head. I'm going higher. And that will tell you when you see people, they will show you what you want to go down too low and see what happens. Oh, this is what trouble me. I don't feel like I, I don't feel like all that. I'll go too high. Oh, they think they all that. Honey, you can let me tell you, every snake must fall when you go too high. Snake can't live in an atmosphere of elevation. They got to fall to the ground. Assume the position. God will teach you in the time of prayer and praise and worship. Come on and give it that money. Assume whatever position he tells you, it will get you information, clarity, and understanding. He will lead you out of the will of God and, and mess you up and then go on to the next person. And he said, not follow for that trail. The devil never fights an individual <laughs> that has nothing to offer. If you don't have nothing to offer, most of the time people don't even want to be attached to you. They said, they don't got nothing. I, I don't want them. But if you got something to offer, baby, they're going to stick around. And be careful of those that siphons and pythons. When they get you around your neck. Again, first they'll come around your feet. Come on, then they'll get all around your body. And then they begin to choke the life out of you. You know why? Because they'll deepen their rubber. It ain't nothing they prayed for. It's nothing that they experienced. It's nothing that they held on to God for and suffered for. They will come and steal your blessings. Come on, steal your anointing. They will steal your money, your time. Assume the position. Get into posture. Whatever you face in this season of your life, if you want instructions, clarity, encouragement, directions, strategy, deliverance, you must assume the position. Sex has stayed the same way until he assumed the position. And when he did, he said, I messed up. That's how I fell in the light of I messed up. 
I got in the crosshairs. Because when you got the will of God, can you never say it like this. You are a fair game. The devil can do whatever he wants to do to you when you're outside the will of God. Because the law of the spirit allows it. Because if you hear, you're safe. He said, the word of light to my path and a lamp unto my feet. So when you step out of the will of God, you are now free to get attacked by the enemy. Now, if you get attacked in God's will, you only can imagine what he will do to you outside of his will. And when you ain't got no power and no anointing, come on, no authority. I've heard people say, you know, I'm going to be praying for you. And they say, you know, I don't know. Oh, they better get this up together. I don't know, they ain't got nothing. I don't know what to say. <laughs> you hear what I'm saying? Assume the position. When you assume the position, you will hear God speak to you, direct you, guide you, and be what you can't, amen, and be to you what you can't get from anyone but him. When the devil says to you, you won't make it. Assume the position. You're a failure. Assume the position. You're going to be broke forever. Assume the position. Your kids will never be saved. Assume the position. You will never be married. Nobody wants you. Assume the position. You're not good enough. Assume the position. You'll never be successful. Assume the position. You will win season because you're going to assume the position. When trouble comes in your home or coming to your life or on your job or in your money or in the ministry, assume the position. Say, devil, you're not going to tell me what to do because I'm going to assume the position. I'm going to bow down. I'm going to worship God. I'm going to look up to him. And if you know enough, guess what? Whenever the enemy comes, he don't know where you are. When God comes, he knows exactly where you are. You assume the position. The devil cannot stop you in this season because you win. Come on, get up on your feet. Assume the position. Hallelujah. My, 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 my. My, 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 my. Assume the position. God has great things for you in this season. But you got to assume the position. We're so busy looking at somebody else. Well, let me see what they got. What are they, what, what they doing? Let me see. Uh-uh. Keep your eyes on Jesus. Set your face like a flint. And assume the position. Come on, just lift your hands to the Lord. Say, God, I'm going to assume the position. Whether it's prayer. That's the first thing to start with this prayer. Without no prayer, there is no power. Come on. My, 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 my. Glory to God. Give God one more praise in this place. I love you. I love you. We can make it out of here. Amen. August the 24th. Amen. At 11 a.m. We're going to give you the location. We're going to be baptizing. Come on, give God a praise. Please, if you're going to participate, and I'm going to give out more information, please see administrator, our administrator, Minister Deborah Bowden. Come on, raise your hand. Come on. We call it the pool party. Because we're going we gonna to party with Jesus. Amen? Oh, yeah, we is. Please make sure she gets your name. Amen? If you're going to be baptized. Amen? We're going to do that. Amen? Yes, we are. And kids also, yes. We'll take them all down. We won't keep them down long. Did y'all want to see? We won't keep them down. Keep them down longer. Just call you and call you the one to get baptized. That was funny. I don't know if y'all saw that on the internet. Amen. Keep them down longer. We're going to baptize. And we're going to be at the a location at Minister Stephanie's house. Come on, raise your hand, brother. She can't wait. She can't. Come on, Lord. We're going to leave the residue over her house. Hope y'all let you out of the Shout out Monday morning. Come on, give me some coffee. Amen. I thought it would be fitting. I kept, we kept praying, Pastor Nick and I, 
and saying what location, what location, and her face came up before me in a vision. I really felt God was telling me, go there, go there. That's safety there, amen? Hallelujah. I thought it was so appropriate, too. I may swim that day out there by the I don't know. I don't know. I can swim, take a contact. I know I'm going to some goggles. Swim underneath them. I'm going to have a wig on next day anyway, so it doesn't matter. I'm going to get my hair wet and stuff like that. Amen. Amen. Come on, give God a praise for the word. Assume the position. Yeah.